everyone! Welcome back to another video and uh, today we have got the first installment of uh, 2018's Inktober videos. So for those of you who don't know, I'm going to be posting a video every Monday of this month, uh, which is going to be basically four Inktober videos, one for each week. So this week we've got days one to seven and I'm very excited to talk to you guys about these, uh, these little drawings I've been doing every single day. <laughs> And I'm currently coming to you from my bed while I'm editing this video because it is very, very cold in my room today. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so day one was poisonous and um, I initially started out with my brush pen. I decided to do a little drawing of a hand, like, but like a magical hand, sort of holding, uh, like levitating a poison bottle. Um, I don't know, I, I kind of also, I want to talk about my process for Inktober this year because um, I've been really really busy recently so I have no idea how I'm managing to keep up with Inktober. Um, I basically before October started I did a bunch of thumbnailing and planning like on my iPad and scraps of paper uh, basically to just prepare me for the drawing every day so I could just sit down and like draw and not really think too much about it. So also a lot of these drawings, I kind of sketched them out in pencil the day before so that the next day, in case something came up or anything, uh, I mean, I, at least I could always just count on already having the sketch drawn out. So I only basically had to line it. Uh, and I decided this year to keep my Inktober drawings very um, black and white based, just so just basically black ink, uh, because last year, I kind of went a bit crazy and I wanted to try like a bunch of things and cram like a ton of things and it just kind of looked a bit messy and incoherent. So this year I wanted to kind of produce a sort of body of work, uh, mainly because I'm also doing um, a little zine at the end of the month with all of my Inktober drawings. So that's very exciting and I'm very, very looking forward to do that. I also will be putting up all of the uh, illustrations I do for Inktober up on my shop, both the originals and prints of them and they will all be available as like little postcards. Uh, so um, I'm also very excited about that. <laughs> so I ended up really, really liking how this one turned out. Uh, I decided to add like a little block background to it to because I felt like the image wasn't like contrasting enough. It wasn't popping out as much as I wanted it to. Uh, so I did a little like s background rectangle in just complete black. I'm using my Koi Sakura brush pen uh, markers that I am very much in love with. And I think that kind of did the trick. It really made the drawing stand out. And uh, I just think it gave it that extra little bit of m black magic that it was needing. <laughs> I also really enjoy how the little like charm necklaces and bracelets look like hanging down from the hand, uh, mostly because that I thought that area was looking a bit void of like stuff. So I wanted to kind of balance out the image and I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. Uh, I wish I would have done something uh, like played around a bit with the shadows behind the little clouds of smoke, but I really enjoy it. So for day two, tranquil, I wanted to do something really like just chill, you know, because, you know, as the name suggests, I wanted to do something really calm. So I had this idea of like a girl just like laying on a field, like on a on, like a patch of grass with some, some flowers and things like that. And I, again, had some trouble uh, with the perspective and everything uh, a little bit in the beginning, but other than that, I think I really, really, really enjoy how this one turned out e eventually. So as opposed to the first drawing uh, where I used a lot more brush pens, uh, for this drawing, I used a lot more of my fine liners. Uh, so I, cause I wanted it to be a lot more detailed work. So I went over and I lined everything uh, a little bit and then uh, I do go in with my brush pens for her hair and everything because uh, later on I kind of felt like it was missing some contrast again. Uh, I feel like that's something I've been focusing a lot on since I'm only working with one color and uh, I feel like it's really been shaping my mind to think about color compositions and just basically illustration compositions in general. 
uh, just working with one color has been really helpful in that department. Uh, so yeah, I thought that it was it was lacking a little bit of contrast between, you know, the plants and her fair skin and just everything. So I kind of went in and darkened the hair after I had lined it. Uh, but you'll see that in a in a short in a short moment. Oh, I also wanted to mention that uh, the fine liners that I used for basically everything this month was my Art and Flight fine liners. I know I've mentioned these fine liners numerous times, but I'm gonna keep mentioning them because I love them a lot. <laughs> uh, again, they're perfect, especially for Inktober. It was what I was most excited to use them for because they have so many different sizes. They have a huge range of sizes, and also they don't bleed or like 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 you know smudge when you rub stuff out or when you add different consistencies of ink over them it's just they're just so perfect for just anything they're great you don't have to worry about anything with them so i'm using those i'm you'll also see me use my uh sakura koi brush pen brush marker your brush pen as well as my pentel uh brush pen my, the classic brush pen that they have Yeah, as you can see here, I was just blocking out the hair with a just a just a solid black color, and then I just added in some extra little strands of hair, um, and I, then I went in with like a, a, a thinner fine liner to add some sort of shadings to her face, um, and I used like a cross a cross hatching method for this. Uh, I just love cross hatching. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of that. So Inktober for me is really good to just get into the practice of that. Also, Inktober is kind of reminding me of how much I love working with uh, just line work, line art, and and markers and fine liners. I literally miss this so much. I'm having a blast so far in uh, Inktober, and at the time that I'm uh, recording this, it's uh, Sunday the 7th, so <laughs> I'm starting uni this uh, coming week. And I, I, I'll, I'll get back to you on how stressed I feel <laughs> in the next video. But so far, everything's really chill and calm, and I've been loving Inktober. So uh, I, I do feel like I'm a lot more well prepared this year than I was last year. So yeah, hopefully everything will be fine. <laughs> so for day three, roasted, um, I kind of had the idea of doing just like a girl camping and um, roasting a marshmallow, and uh, I. I feel like this one also came out with a very like chill vibe. I, I really enjoyed it. It kind of brought me back to my Duke of Edinburgh days when we went camping and we just kind of sat there cooking on <laughs> on the ground and some cats would come over and it was great. So I drew like a little kitty kind of sitting next to her uh, looking up and yeah, it also made me miss my kitties. <laughs> I draw a lot of cats in uh, a lot of these prompts. So yeah, get ready for those. <laughs> I again used a mixture of my fine liners and my brush pens for this one. Uh, I kind of went in for the with the fine liners for most of like the detailed work, and then I used the brush pens for the more sporadic kind of branch work around that kind of did the framing for the picture. I tried to do some sort of framing of the illustration in the background using the branches, so that was fun. I do, however, in the next like coming week, want to try and use something uh, different in terms of uh, supplies because I've been using the same like three <laughs> three uh, pens or at least brands um, like on a heavy rotation. So I want to kind of try and expand that. I do want to have a, a try with my gel pens because last year I used gel pens a lot and I want to kind of get back into those. So hopefully you'll see a lot more of those gel pens coming. Um, I also don't know if I should incorporate some sort of color into my drawings or something because I, I did want to keep on with a the theme, but there are some that are coming up that I think would look really cool with some spots of color. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. Should I keep going with the theme of uh, black and white or should I add some color to some of them? Let me know. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this one, actually. It was kind of... Uh, one that I was looking a, a little bit, I was a bit worried about because it had so much like d 
detail and it was more of a set sort of illustration you know like a background and a character and a set environment so to say and I was kind of worried it would look a little bit too comic booky and not really I don't know I was kind of worried it wouldn't look it wouldn't fit in with the rest of my body of works from October but it ended up looking pretty cool um, it looks cool when it's uh, hung up on the wall next to all the other ones uh, yeah, that's another thing. I'm, I've been um, putting up all of my Inktobers um, up on my wall. When I just look at the wall and it like keeps growing every day, it's really cool to look at. So it's also really motivational. So if you're having some trouble like with doing Inktober, I think just sticking your things up on the wall uh, really motivates you to keep creating. Cause like, oh, I want to add some more over to my wall. <laughs> So yeah, this is kind of how it turned out in the end. I liked how it looked. That that's that's that is all. <laughs> it looks cute. It looks adorable. And then for the next one, uh, day four was spell, and uh, I was very excited about this one because I would be able to implement my OC Ella, who's like a little witch. For those of you who don't know Ella, she's like a little witch. She's got purple hair. She's like Sailor Moony ish but she like, has nothing to do with the moon or the universe. She's just like a little witch and she has like a little moon kind of birthmark on her forehead. Yeah, I wanted to do a little illustration of Ella trying to practice her spell work because she's a, a bit of a, a mess and I love her for that. Like I relate. <laughs> and I think it just ended up being a really funny, like a really fun piece to look at. It's. It's just fun, I guess, and that's kind of what I wanted to have with this piece was fun. Yeah, I just kind of drew Ella trying to cast a spell on some like potion thing and it really it went sideways <laughs> and she's looking a bit like, oh, 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 oh no, that's not meant to happen. <laughs> and I also had fun kind of drawing all the little props around her. So like the, the crystals and her spell book and a little cauldron and yeah. Uh, I, d I do wish I'd, I'd gone in with a cat again, but you know, I, I was kind of like, I need to, I need to tone it down the cats, man. <laughs> I'm starting to look like a crazy cat woman, which I am, uh, but yeah. I also, as you can see, I'm using my uh, Banggood uh, brush pens. Oh, so it turns out I did use a separate, like another brand of uh, supplies I didn't realize I had <laughs> used, but so yeah, these are my trusty brush pens from Banggood. Uh, I I did a whole review video on these uh, a while back, and I still keep going back to them. They're amazing. Um, I need to order some more actually. Like two of them are running out of ink. <laughs> I, I basically used the brush pen for this to do pretty much everything because the tip is so flexible and so amazing that you can kind of do line work with it as well as just I don't I don't know how to explain. You can use it as a fine layer as well as a brush pen. It's really amazing. And it's good to to fluctuate between thicker and thinner lines, so it's it's very useful in these situations, especially on this day because apparently it was really lazy in using different materials. Um, <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, I'm just drawing out the little cauldron and her crystals and everything. And that was all really fun. Uh, and then for the most fun part was drawing out the smoke cloud that was kind of in the shape of a skull. Um, and I, I, I had a lot of fun with this specifically because it kind of reminded me of all of those like Disney movies um, where this sort of thing was very popular. So like, you know, in Snow White, when uh, the evil witch is dipping the apples in whatever she was dipping the apples in <laughs> and then like a little skull emerged. And I really in, I, I was really taking a lot of inspiration from that scene. Uh, I also had a bunch of fun kind of drawing out her hair being blown back uh, in a sort of like explosion moment. That was fun too. <laughs> and then uh, I just kind of scribbled in some spells in, in her spell book. Uh, I don't really know if I drew some sort of pentagram or anything, so I, I, I'm really not sure. I just kind of scribbled some stuff. <laughs> oh, 
also i do advise you to get a cup of tea or something or coffee because these videos are going to be pretty long <laughs> uh, for the next coming coming weeks and i'm drinking a uh, coffee myself while i'm recording this so sorry if you hear some slurps let me know if you want me to speed up the videos a little bit more in the next video or not like i really like the the look that just kind of chopping them up but keeping them real time looked uh, but, you know, if you guys want to see more of a speed painting situation happening for the next Inktober compilation, let me know. I'll do just that. Uh, and yeah, so here I was just adding the last final details, like, to her hair and stuff like that with some fine liners. And that's always fun. I love doing hair, like, drawing out hair with fine liners, and just, I just really do love doing that. <laughs> it's really therapeutic work, I think. Adding some last minute details. And that was pretty much it for day four. Uh, I really enjoyed how it looked. Honestly, like as a, a little environment comic booky moment, I liked it. <laughs> and then for day five, day five was chicken. And I'll be honest, I think that many people were a bit confused about this prompt, uh, as I kind of saw on Instagram and Twitter. But I'll, I'll be honest, when I saw this prompt, what immediately came to mind was like a little cute little chick, uh, like hatching from an egg, and I thought that was the most adorable thing. So um, I was using some reference pictures from Pinterest uh, to draw out this little chick, and uh, I thought it would look really cool if it was like, if it had like a bunch of plants around it that were like way too big for it, and it kind of like towered over him, and just really making them look really small and cute and fluffy like real fluffy. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed doing this piece because it was something so out of my comfort zone. I, I, Not only do I normally not really draw many animals, but I definitely do not draw chickens <laughs> or birds for that matter. Uh, I don't really know why. Uh, I just get really intimidated at the thought of drawing them. And I had so much fun drawing this little chicky. Look at it, it's so cute. And I'm definitely going to be drawing a lot more of these now. Like, look at how cute. Oh. I was so soft for this drawing, I honestly it was. <laughs> uh, so I was kind of going for a, uh, like a little Alice in Wonderland moment where like all the, all the flowers are huge and like towering over her and everything. And I think it looked real cute. Uh, and I, I also drew like some other eggs uh, like next to the chick with his little brothers kind of hatching too. Uh, uh, the one on the left, far left, he's like, his little beak is just popping out. He's just, he's ready. He's coming out. And I think it looked really adorable. It was also very, like, spring uh, aesthetic, I think. I think it really gave off that vibe. Uh, so, yeah. It's really cool to think how I was so concerned about this uh, specific prompt. Yet, it was probably one of the ones that I enjoy doing the most because... <laughs> Uh, it was just something so new, and I was like, oh my god, I love doing this. Why haven't I done this before? Why don't I do this more? And yeah, I kind of sped up the clip of me drawing all the like little foliage and stuff around them because I, I don't know, there's really no formula for how I do it. I just kind of scribble a lot of lines and eventually they kind of look like foliage, if that makes any sense whatsoever. <laughs> and then I just kept adding details and like little stones and little... Uh, like little flowers and stuff like that around them and I couldn't stop myself I just have to make it look cuter <laughs> and then I decided to add in some little shadings uh, just to kind of make the the different objects pop out again thinking about composition So as you can see, I pretty much only used fine liners for this drawing, and it was very interesting. Um, I mostly just wanted to keep it very cross-hatchy, line art work stuff. Words are very good for me today. <laughs> and I think it ended up looking really different, but like really cute um, to the rest of my works. Uh, especially when it's up on the wall, uh, it, it looks like a lot more like my minute, small, little detailed work. And I think it just, it stands out in that manner. I think I really enjoyed how this one looked. Uh, it has a completely different vibe to it and I love it. And then I tried adding some shading to the chick uh, without, you know, taking away from its fluff. 
so I didn't really add that much detail to it, just added a little bit more like little accent lines to make it look a bit more fluffy, because it's never too much fluffy. And that was pretty much it for this piece. Uh, I forgot to write down um, the Inktober day, blah, 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 and the prompt beneath the drawing, but I wrote it down afterwards. Just forgot to do it here, so sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, I think it ended up looking adorable. Day six, uh, <laughs> good, day six, as in the band, anyway. So drooling was, uh, Probably the one I was the most excited to draw out for this week. Uh, I've been looking forward to it all week because it was probably the most disgusting one uh, that I had like an idea for that I thought would look really beautiful. And I was excited to see how I was going to pull it off. So I had uh, the idea for drooling of like a girl kind of submerged um, in in her own drool and yeah it sounds disgusting when you think about it but like it looks so cute and classy and serene it's kind of one of those drawings that you you kind of love it until you hear what it's about <laughs> if that makes any sense uh so i was like showing it to my mom's like oh hey mom i did this drawing and she's like oh cute it was it for october I'm like yeah it's drooling and she was like oh <laughs> i just found that very very funny <laughs> So I decided to kind of uh, create most of the outlines uh, with the brush pen or with my 0.8 fine liner to really accentuate the outline and then kind of use the smaller fine liners to do all the rest of the work. Uh, and I think it worked out really well, like the contrast between the thicker lines and the thinner lines. I think they all really worked really well with each other. And I had a lot of fun doing this one, mostly again, because I was so not used to drawing water like with fine liners it was something i was kind of scared to do but also so excited to try out and again it was really out of my comfort zone so i really enjoyed doing this <laughs> I think it also turned out like a really cute illustration, like probably one of my faves so far as I think it'll look really cool like as a print and uh, I never really see my works like um, imagining them as a print or anything but this one like kind of it looks really cool both as a sticker or like a print because it's got such a unique shape. I just think it, 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 it kind of works really well and also with the theme. I was quite surprised with myself. <laughs> and then again, I went in with a thinner fine liner to add a bunch of shading to her face, so like her cheekbones and underneath her chin, uh, because of the perspective and everything. I was kind of hesitant with the shading because I was really scared of screwing it up. Because uh, I'm really not that comfortable with this sort of perspective of the face so I was going in really slowly and like kind of taking my time so I didn't screw anything up in the end I really enjoyed it and I'm very happy with how it turned out so go me <laughs> And as I said before, I kind of went over the outline with my 0.8 fine liner to really just increase that contrast between like her face and the water, just to really, really, you know, separate the two. And I think it really did some magic. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty much how it looked in the end. I'm very, very happy with it. And that's my head while I was trying to sign it. <laughs> And that was day six. And now for the final day, uh, for the seventh day on a Sunday, uh, which is when I'm filming this, <laughs> when I'm recording this, uh, exhausted. For this prompt, I had basically this image of my mood 24 seven, which is just me exhausted on my bed, just dead pretty much. And I kind of took a lot of inspiration from my childhood room when I was drawing this out, uh, like the corner where my bed was. 
and I think it ended up looking like super chill as well. I just I I, I had already like come to terms that this piece was going to be full of detail and a lot of shading but I was ready you know it was a Sunday I had time I was totally fine with it I had a blast <laughs> so I'm drawing out this little girl with a heck of a butt by the way hello and her little kitty just both napping uh it also fit really well that I was drawing this on the Sunday and this is this was my mood uh, <laughs> it, and she was just like exhausted like in the middle of reading a book and she just passed out which again mood and yeah I, I went in with my fine liners first to kind of draw out all of the outlines so to say and then I, I had tons of fun drawing out this I've been a huge fan recently of drawing out like rooms and architectural sort of drawings and illustrations I've just been really excited about doing those I don't know why uh, I think it's just also because I, I love drawing more geometric stuff sometimes because it really helps unwind from all the portrait stuff and being worried about perfectionism and everything I think like sometimes just sitting back and drawing a room is like really good uh, I, I find it very chill I just it's very relaxing for me personally uh, I like detailed backgrounds, I like drawing backgrounds, so I guess that kind of comes from my animation background. <laughs> I also think the kitty turned out adorable. I added like a little patch on his forehead and it kind of reminds me of my cat and now I'm sad. <laughs> I miss my cats. So then I filled in the window with my Sakura Koi brush marker because it's like a really opaque black. So uh, I filled that in and I let it dry for a bit before I added in the stars and everything. And then again, thinking about composition, I kind of thought that the hair should be um, dark as well because I just feel like it balanced out the picture really well. And I, as opposed to like the other drawings where I filled in the hair with black and then went in with a white pen to add highlights, I decided to keep the black hair like completely like solid black because I don't know, I just think it looked really cool. I just think it, it didn't need any more, if that makes any sense. Also, my white gel pen is pretty much finishing. I need to buy some more. Oh, also to do the stars and uh, the moon and everything, I used um, some white out tipex and I basically made a like a blob of it on a sticky note and then I kind of kept dipping the nib in to create these so I had a little bit more control about how much ink I was putting on the paper and yeah whiteout is like my best friend in these situations so <laughs> and then again here I'm using my Banggood uh, brush pens to kind of add in the darker shadings and like the more block color shadings um, and then with my fine liners, I went in and adding, added cross hatching to everything. <laughs> and I spent uh, quite a, a while on this piece, as I said before. Uh, but it was, again, very therapeutic. I really didn't mind. I just kept adding to it and adding to it. And then darkening some areas with some more cross hatching and, work and adding some little details here and there. And in the end, I was so, so happy with how it turned out. Like, honestly, I think it looks adorable. It looks peaceful. And it is also, again, a huge mood. So <laughs> I kind of added a little border and then I put my signature on one of the papers on her wall. And that was it, guys. That was that was day seven. And that was my first week of Inktober, days one through seven. Uh, I'm very, very excited uh, for the rest of Inktober and for doing the rest of the videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a long boy, but uh, you should be expecting it. It's a whole week worth of drawing. <laughs> so here is all my drawings uh, complete uh, for from the first week. And let me know if you guys want me to put the prints up now or all of them at the end of the month. Uh, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye bye.